most interesting and exciting performers in music today. He's also best known as the lead singer in Rollins Band. He's also a writer, a publisher, and a spoken word performer and an actor. Please welcome Henry Rollins. <laughs> Now, I assume people often misjudge you sometimes. Maybe they see the, the tattoos and... Yeah, they probably think I'm an idiot or something, yeah. Well, not an idiot, but it's, it's probably frightening. I mean, if you were a person just walking down the street and... You can see now you're smiling, so you look fine. But when you... Oh, thanks. But when you scowl, well, it looks like you could be like... I think the legal definition is crazy guy. They yeah, say, well, no, no, it's a little crazy. But you're not. I mean, you're not, though. Yeah. Because I said poet. I know you hate that word. I mean, but... It just it lends itself to such pretension. Yeah. If you're going to say something, you know, shut up and say it and move, you know? <laughs> yeah, right, well, right. these poets are... What Nietzsche said about poets was good. He goes, uh, poets are those who muddy their waters to make them appear deep. Which <laughs> means if I don't understand it, it must be good. Oh, yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, have you ever gone to any of these... They sort of have these, like, poetry reading things here in Hollywood where sort of... And they're miserable, aren't they? Well, these <laughs> young actors who've never really read poetry... I'm not putting it up and down, but they kind of go... I like no, let's, let's put them down. They're horrible. Okay, put them down. They're horrible. <laughs> I mean, come on. Do you, go to, do, you, do you go to any of those just looking for material? Have, have, you, have you been to any of that stuff? Looking for material? Well, just, I, again, as a comic, I go going, oh, this is a great thing to make fun of, you know. But I mean, to no, comment no, on I, it. When I do uh, the speaking dates, I just uh, talk about my own life's experiences. I just kind of like eh, tell stories, retell it, you know, if there's anything I learned in the process, you know. I, I reckon uh, anything that didn't kill you is pretty good to right. talk about, <laughs> you know? Or like, you know, the, uh, just, you know, something that was maybe horrible a long time ago, maybe you can even make it funny. I mean, I, I, for a while when I was on the road a few years ago doing spoken dates, I was telling this story about how I punched this guy out in Australia a few years ago and took his teeth out and ended up in the hospital down the street from here and with like, you know, all this goop getting taken out of my hand and, I had it, I got his teeth at home. Some guy threw him on stage. <laughs> and like at the time I lost nine pounds in the hospital and I had this yeah. like gaping hole in my hand and the doctor said you might lose your finger and all this. And I was like, ah. And now it's like, uh, yeah, I'm an idiot. I was stupid and, and now it's funny. Right, now it's a fun, now it's a fun heartwarming tale. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I know, I remember hearing you talk about, <laughs> talk about the riots. And I thought that was, cause you know, I was trying to get a theory when, when I saw you, cause it's not, stand-up comedy. I mean, it's funny, but uh, you see, I always figure that people don't gather anymore. They don't gather and talk, you know, and, and what you do sort of reminds me of what people used to do, you know, maybe 150 years ago. Someone would come to a town and speak about things, and yeah. everybody would just sort of gather around and, and listen, and it isn't like a comedy show, although I did find it very well, funny, some of the things you had to say. It's nice to balance. See, what I do, I, I do a lot of different medias, you know. I, I've been doing, like, soundtrack work and movie work in the movie thing, and I, I write books and I publish other writers. And I got a full-time band. We travel all over the world playing every year. Yeah. And I do these speaking dates, you know, all over the world. And uh, for me, it's just, like, different slices of the same pie, you know. And I... Being in a, uh, a high decibel band <clears throat> with a, a fairly large production, crew, lights, the whole, the whole nine yards, and you're hitting people with, with... The music we do is decidedly, you know, very visceral, very intense, you know, not like moronic or like dumb 4-4 stuff. It's got a real avant edge to it. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> but see, I like, I like the spoken words. To me, that's my, my medium, the spoken words. So to me, I listen to people talk like yourself, the way well, other people well, listen the to point music. I, What I was saying is, yeah. I do all that. So right. I, I, I spend a lot of the year going, big volume, <laughs> big density right. thing. And it's nice to go out by myself low volume, very direct signal, vocal, like, hey, here I am, you know, there's no big deal around me, and I'm going to tell you this thing where I was a jerk, and here's, here's where I messed up, and here's what I learned from it, and you can have a laugh at me. Now, tell me about your background. Where, where'd you, where are you from? Where did you grow up? Uh, I was uh, from Washington, D.C., oh, okay. and I lived there for a... Uh, <laughs> all right. So what did you want to do as a kid? Where did you... What, what was your direction? I, I went to a like a, a naval preparatory school for seven years where they got people ready for uh, West Point in the Naval Academy. And I got sent there because I was like the problem student, you know, wise guy. And they, they changed your mind about that really fast. Now, was there a tattoo shop right near the base? <laughs> no, no, no. My mom did all these. Your mom did these? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're funny, right? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, go. 
give me something. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I got a, I got a kick drum. So uh, I, I got out of there and just yeah. basically did the uh, the uh, sixty hour a week minimum wage job frustration. Then I got to be in a band called Black Flag. Right. Yeah. yeah. And. Uh, we went out and starved and, you know, tore it up for five years. And then uh, that band broke up and I started my own thing. And uh, we starved and tore it up for a few years. And uh, now we pay the rent and tear it up. Right, right. So it's basically the same. So you, you haven't compromised at all. Zero. Yeah. There's, yeah. Nothing, there's nothing that's attractive enough to me to sell out. Yeah. Well, that's, well, that's a good attitude to have. I... All, they can, all they can suck you with is is money. It's the, that's the only thing they can sucker punch you with. And Good sucker punch. Yeah, it's a nice one, but <laughs> if, if you have to look at yourself in the morning every day and, and go, I, I, I can still live with you, if that's a yeah. premium in your life, that's optimal. So tell me what selling out would be. Like with this, with this, how are, there are people that say, well, you go on national TV, you go on a show like The Tonight Show, pretty mainstream show, I, is that, is that selling out? Making music where the intent is to sell units instead of making music mm that is meaningful. As in, if someone like a, a pretty obscure sax player named like Albert, Albert Eiler, okay, he made music because it was coming out of him. And then on the other hand, there's like a band who goes out, whips out the demographic and goes, okay, we're aiming for that. Right, right. Okay, now one thing is real and the other thing is business. So and both are respectable. If you want to do that commercial angle, fine. Uh, I never, yeah. I mean, well, it's nothing, no, it's not, nothing it's wrong lot, with it. it. It's a lot like jazz, because we have this discussion like with, with Branford and I. It's like jazz. Branford plays the music he likes to play. Right. And if it doesn't, if it sells 200,000 units instead of 200 million units, like some of these, he's still doing what he wants to do. And that's essentially what you're saying, because you're a jazz fan too, right? Big you? time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, some of the greatest records in the world never sell any. I mean, Monk never went platinum. Yeah. And yeah. He, he houses anybody who, you know, uh, there's nobody better than that guy. Miles never had platinum records. Yeah. You know, but like all these little skateboard boys, they'll all have platinum <laughs> records at the end of the year. Hey, will you come back and talk to us some more? Yeah, sure. Henry Rollins. Thanks, Henry. Be right back right after this. Nice to have you here. Very refreshing. Good thank to talk you. with you. Thank you. Thank you. Maxine, very funny as always. Maxine Jeffries, thank, thank you. you very much. You'll be all over Minnesota. Of course, Mark Harmon. The film is Wyatt Earp. Jonathan Winters will be here in the music of Crash Test Dummies. And Roy, the guy that does amazing things with his ears. Roy Phillips, that's his name. Blows candles out, does stuff. Just to see the ear thing, you got to tune in. See you tomorrow night, folks. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>